Dexter. We're still coming up with this night as a spoon on two wounded. Man, he's making lasagna. Uh, I got things to do then. No <laughs> things. We arrange just affordable portables around that one room Roach Motel you call a home. I've been over too much lately. Look, my kids love you, Connie loves you, I love you, how kind he loves you. You're our leg anyway. Look, we want you there. Uh, it's your family, Fussa. I'm in all the time anyway. Joey, we go up together, okay? We're partners. I don't want you going back to that armpit of a bachelor pad and sticking into a bottle of schnapps in that. Can you give it a rest, please? <laughs> please, my ears, I'm sensitive. Look, Joey, we're gonna be detectives together one day, all right? I look out for you, and you look out for me. Joey, come on. You know, and well, that was the night he set me up with Rhonda. It even began to rain that night, I remember. I mean, it didn't give up a minute or two until the whole mess was over. In today's world, light is being shown on police officers all across the nation because the events that unfolded in Ferguson, Baltimore, and New York. And much scrutiny is held against these officers for their actions. But when push comes to shove, could you tell good from evil in the blink of an eye? A steady rain, a key thought. Our next day out patrol, see, it was one of those days you dread. See, then he wasn't talking. You know, usually he blabbers on and on, this and that. <laughs> but I mean, today he was so quiet, I started sweating in my seat. Oh, tail end of our shift call came in, routine disorderly, caught it down, then he called Deviant Corners. We pull up into this alley off of Deviant Corners, and right away on the headlights we see this kid, this Vietnamese kid, stoned out of his mind, not a stitch of clothes. There's never a dull moment in this neck of the woods. So me and Joe, <laughs> keep our headlights on. We draw service revolvers, because any cop, you see somebody out of control this way, distress or not, it's usually a PCP. Uh, X. Crack. H. You never know. So you play it safe. So we go to him, slow, cautious. And then he turns and sees us. Me and Joey, we can see this kid's in tears. <laughs> and he's jamming a mile in Vietnamese about something woeful and, and stop us up but ignores any order we toss him. Face down despite the bead I got on him, the kid runs up to me, ducks under my gun, and glooms up onto me. <sighs> I mean, hell, I, I, I don't shoot. I mean, this kid's obviously unarmed. So I'm just standing here like a jerk with this naked kid hugging on to me and I, I look over to Joey for a little assistance here and he tells me, You calm him down and I'll go get the blanket. <laughs> and and I, I don't know, how do you calm this kid down? I mean, he's 13 or 14 and naked, I, I can't hug him back. I mean, this naked kid is hugging onto me in the rain, and half the neighborhood is just grandstanding out their windows watching me. And then finally, like eight hours later, Joey comes back and has to practically peel this kid off of me. And we pried him loose eventually, and, and trying to talk him down, you know, but getting nowhere at all. And then some blonde guy walks up and says, I'll take care of Liao. He says the kid's name is Liao, and he's his uncle or cousin or both. I do remember he said this kid had some kind of war trauma. At the drop of the hat, Leo just flips out. Which made sense at the time, so then he tells me. Let's release him to his uncle's custody in Psalm screen, huh? Joey didn't want to do it at first. You know, Leo seemed scared to death of his uncle. Well, we couldn't understand a word this kid was saying, so how were we supposed to know? I told him maybe we should bring him in, you know, hunt down Turbo to figure out what he's saying. Fine, Jay. Play Mother Teresa. Save the world. I got official police business to do. And then the kid, he went limp in my arms. You know, and I'm standing here with this half-naked kid in my arms, and, and then he's marching off. You know, I don't know what to do. So I handed him over to his uncle. You know, he seemed nice enough. <laughs> I even looked him square in the eye to get a good read. He seemed decent. You know, he really did. Yeah. They got the cycle guy. You know, this cannibal killer, worse than anything anybody's ever seen in the movies. And it turns out that that little Vietnamese boy, Liao, was one of his victims. No sooner do the papers, the news flash this guy's picture, and witnesses account the night they see these two deadbeat cops handing over this crying Vietnamese boy over to a cannibal killer. See, at first, Dickinson, he suspended us. A week later, the press got a hold of it, he'd offered us a deal. If we both admit to breaching protocol by not running Liao in, he promises full reinstatement in a month. 
but then he didn't want to admit to any wrong. He said he was the kid's uncle. How we believed he was the kid's uncle. I, I don't know, Asian. Kids of my own, don't you think that this eats me up? I mean, I can still see his face. I can still feel his arms wrapped around me like I was his last saving grace and I failed him. I mean, isn't that punishment enough? collapsed inside and his drinking got worse than him. God, I hated seeing Denny like this, you know, so I called any attorney who talked to me and asked him about fighting the suspension in court. You know, Joey, he tells me, go with what Dickinson says or else I'll make things worse. I gotta make a safe, secure home for my family. I mean, my wife, my kids, my family, that's who I am. That's all I let anybody hold me responsible for. When we went to see the guy together, he says that no matter what your stories are, the fact of the matter is that you two cops took the call on the Vietnamese boy, and what if you hand him over to the killer? And I said, what are you trying to say here? We don't have a case? One of you has to take the fall. I mean, me and Joey were like brothers. And this guy wants to put us one against the other so one of us can get our job back. I mean, what's the logic in that? Because this world is bubbling over with bloodshed, one of us has to be nailed down to dry. I'll take the fall. No. No. That needed his family. God, then he needed his family to need him. You know, who the hell am I? Where'd you get this? I got it. You know, he was still doing the morphine in. And I found this bottle next day. A fifth of JD. Really half empty? Half full. Hey, Joe. Thinking in the eyes of a demon when you see one? They didn't know, Danny, you know? First thing we got to do to face this thing is let ourselves the hook. We, we didn't know. But we should know, Joey. We should know the eyes of a demon when we see one. We can't know. How are we supposed to know? Because it's our job. Otherwise, we end up with demons for friends. They want a hero, Joey. Be a hero. That's what they want. That's the way to get reinstated. Able to tell good from evil in a blink of an eye. That's what they want, and that's what they'll get. No. You can't take the blame for all of it, Penny. I got it. No, you don't, Penny. Hey, Joe, take care Penny, of don't you life. do this, Penny, please! <laughs> don't you do this. Hey, Zoe. Penny. Tinder one Dickerson reinstates you, and you make detective within a month for bringing down the bad guy single hand. I look back at Danny in the phone. And he's reloading Varallo's service report. And then I hear the shot from the sign. <laughs> you know, Danny took the fall for all of this. <laughs> and like he predicted, you know, I came out smelling like roses. I mean, the tech the next round's a promotion. God, it's strange the things you gotta lose the game this much. Joey, we grew up together. We're partners. I look out for you, and you look out for me. And then he was a part of me. And you will be forever. Joey, come on. <laughs>